Department of Anatomy, Sriyu Government Medical College, Rajput, welcomes you today in the radio imaging series. Today we will discuss about the chest X-ray. In any X-ray, these are the points we should look for. Whether it is a plane or spatial view of the X-ray, side exposure, posture, normal and abnormal visible X-ray, rotation and inspiration. If there is any special technique is used, then it is a special X-ray. Generally, chest X-rays are taken in the posteroanterior view, but in emergency, they are taken in the anteroposterior view also. L is marked on the left side of the thoracic cavity that indicates this is the left side and this is the right side of the patient. Generally, chest X-rays are taken in the erect posture. But in an emergency, where patient cannot stand up, as a result, taken in the supine position also. So, we should be consider the posture of the patient also. For rotation, identify the medial end of the clavicle first, of both sides. Point out a one spinous process in between them. Spinous process to the clavicle. If the distance is equal, then it is a properly rotated status. Generally, chest X-rays are taken in fully spirited status. Here we can see the two images from the same patient. The first is the posteroanterior view and second is the anteroposterior view. We will try to appreciate here what are the effects of the AP view, what are the effects of the view on the chest X-ray image. First, to differentiate the anteroposterior view from the posteroanterior view, look for the scapular margin. The scapular margin are better appreciated in anteroposterior view than the posteroanterior view, by which we can identify the X ray is AP view. Second thing, because of the anteroposterior view, the upper part of the mediastinum looks broader as well as size of the heart looks larger also. That's why we should differentiate, we should identify whether the X-ray is taken in anteroposterior view or the posteroanterior view. This is the image from the stand patient. This is the lateral view where we can see this is the anterior side, posterior side. This is the sternum, border of heart, vertebral column and the diaphragm. Generally, lateral view are taken to identify the position of foreign body or infiltration or any space occupying lesion. Let's try to identify some basic structure. In the midline here, you can see some lucent shadow. This indicates the trachea. A trachea should be in the midline. Here it divides in the right and left bronchus. So this part is the carina. We can appreciate the right border of mediastinum. So this is because of the right atrium. Similarly, on the left side, this is the our technical. And this is the left border of the heart. This is because of the left ventricle. This is the right term of diaphragm and the left term of diaphragm. The dome of diaphragm makes an angle with the heart border. This angle is known as the cardiophrenic angle. Similarly, the diaphragm makes an angle with the thoracic cavity. This is known as the costophrenic angle. Here we can identify other bony structures like clavicle. These are the posterior end of ribs. We can trace the rib also like this up to the anterior end. So these are the basic structure what we can identify in the chest x-ray. In addition to that, this is the right hilum and left hilum. We can see this type of white traces. These are because of the bronchial tree. Similar Similarly, here we can identify some dense structure. It is a 
tracheobronchial lymph nodes. So these are the some basic normal structure that can be seen in any normal chest X-ray. Let's try to identify the ribs. Here we can see the posterior end of the first rib, second, then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. If you can count the posterior end of ten rib, then the X-ray is taken in properly inspirated state. What happens if the X-ray is not taken in properly inspirated status? If the X-ray is not taken in properly inspirated status, then the heart looks larger than it is. Okay. In depth, what you should look for in this X-ray? First is the airway. Breathing is the lung and pleural spaces, cardiomediastinal counter, and a disability of fracture of bones, and everything else for pathology like pneumoperitoneum, hydrothorax, etc. Let's start with the airway. This is the trachea as we discussed previously. So, first you should try to identify the trachea. Then also look for the carina. Here you can see this dotted line indicates the trachea. This is the right bronchus. Here the trachea divides in the right and left bronchus, so this is the carina. Then you can also look for the bronchial tree. These are the bronchial tree. The bronchial tree. If it looks a more denser or more darker, then it may indicate some pathology. Now look at this anthroposterior view of X-ray. Here you can see the trachea is deviated towards the left side. Okay. We will not try to differentiate the pathology at this state, but you can see or you can appreciate some pathology in this state because the trachea should be always in midline. If the trachea is deviated, then it indicates some lung pathology. The second thing you should appreciate is the breathing. Try to identify and compare the lung volume and expansion on both sides, right and left side. In this image, we have just uh, make an imaginary line so we can compare the right as well as the left side of the lung. This is the area of the lung and their inflated status. The lung volume and expansion should be equal on both sides. Like this. This is the right side of the lung and this is the left side of the lung. This is the apical part of the lung and middle part of the lung, similarly basal part of the lung. So we can identify here the fissure also. This is the horizontal fissure. Okay. So the lung exposure as well as the apical, middle and basal part of the lung should be equally expanded on both sides. Similarly, look for the costophrenic angle. The costophrenic angle should be visible proper. Cardiophrenic angle should also be visible proper. As in this, first identify the border of the thoracic cage. Make an angle with the diaphragm. This is the costophrenic angle. Similarly, this is the cardiophrenic anchor. The right and left border of the mediastinum should be properly identifiable. Here, in this X-ray, you can see the right lung is fully expanded and inflated, while the left lung 
absorb some density in middle and lower lobes. The same X-ray, if we take in the little view, we can see there is an infiltration in the middle and the lower lobe of the left X-ray. So this indicates some pathology in the left lung. Now look at this image. In this X-ray, you can see some density in the middle lobe of the left lung. So this indicates some infiltration or space occupying lesion in the middle lobe of the left lobe. In this x-ray we can identify the horizontal fissure. This is the horizontal fissure. So this lesion is below the horizontal fissure which indicates it is present in the middle or lower lobe. Also you can identify the horizontal fissure on the left right side. This is the horizontal fissure. Thing, circulation. In the circulation, we will appreciate the position of the heart, size of the heart, aortic knuckle, upper mediastinal counter, pulmonary vessels, and hilar structures. In this image, first make an image in the line which passes through the midline of the vertebral column. Take a farthest point on the right border of the heart and the left border of the heart and measure a distance between the right and left farthest point. That indicates the width of the heart. This width should be less than 50 percentage of the breadth of the thoracic cavity. In PA projection, post anterior view, it should be less than 50 percentage of the chest diameter. As we know that in AP projection, it looks artifactually enlarged. Now, on the left border of the mediastinum, we can appreciate this structure. This is an aortic knuckle. Because of the aortic arch, tracing below, this is the pulmonary trunk and this is the left ventricle. On the right side, this part indicates the superior vena cava, then right atrium and inferior vena cava. Here we can compare and identify the hilar shadow on the right and the left side. This indicates structures of the hilum like trachea and bronchus, right bronchus, left bronchus. These are the pulmonary vessels. Generally, the right side of hilum is at upper level than the left side of the hilum. Now look at these images. R indicates the right side of the thoracic cage. In this image, you can see the heart looks deviated on the right side. Normally, heart is on the left side, but here, heart looks on the right side. We can see that the liver is also present on the right side. That means, this is a case of dextrocardia. This should be differentiated from the collapse of the right lung and other pulmonary conditions. In the next image, also, you can see the heart is on the right side. Also, the stomach is on the right side and liver is on the left side. So, this is the case of the situs inversus. Every time, if you have, if you look for this type of an X-ray, again confirm with the inspection of the patient whether the heart is present on the right or left side and differentiate other common conditions first. Then come to the diagnosis of the dextrocardia. In this images, look for the breadth 
of the heart. The heart breath is larger than more than 50 percentage of the thoracic cage breath. That means this is the case of enlargement of heart or the cardiomegaly. Here we can see the carina. This margin is because of the right atrium and this margin is because of the ventricle. Also look for the disabling structure or fracture like in this x-ray we can see the rib is captured here on the left side of the lung we can see lots of bone structure in this x-ray like clavicle scapula ribs vertebral body so also try to appreciate the fracture or any abnormality of this bony structure also like you look for the fracture of the clavicle, fracture of the rib as well as any abnormality in vertebral bodies. Now look at this x-ray. This is the clavicle medial end of clavicle. This is the trachea. Here's, here is the our technical primary trunk. Left border of the heart. Right border of the heart. Lung on both sides looks equally exposed, equally ventilated and inflated. Hilum also looks normal. But under the left and right dome of diaphragm we can see the as the left dome of diaphragm this as here is the gastric air and this air is between the stomach and the diaphragm similarly on the left side so this is the case of pneumoperitoneum the pneumoperitoneum can also be identified in just access. Here we can see a density in the upper and middle lobe of the right side of the lung. This may be because of pneumonia or infiltration. Look at this actually. This is the costophrenic angle of the right side. We cannot identify properly the costophrenic angle on the left side. That means this costophrenic angle is obliterated, which indicates there is some accumulation in the pleural cavity. So this is the case of the pleural effusion. Again, in this X-ray, we can see the costophrenic angle on the right side. But on the left side, the costophrenic angle does not look better. Instead, we can see a sharp water liver line on the left side. That means this indicates the air and fluid here. Here we can see the left lung in this area, it looks a hyper -addition. So this indicates here is an air and this is the fluid. So this is the case of the hydro pneumothorax. The same case, if we look from the lateral view, we can see the water level, sharp water level, air and water level in case of hydro pneumothorax. Okay, now look at this accent. Again, we can identify the trachea. Here is the left border of the 
black border of the heart and uh, costo diaphragmatic angle on the left side but costo diaphragmatic angle on the right side does not look proper that means there is an accumulation of fluid on the right side we cannot differentiate the fluid in the chest x-ray but this is because of the chylothorax which is an accumulation of lymphatic fluid in the pleural cavity that condition is known as chylothorax accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity is known as hydrothorax accumulation of blood in the pleural cavity is known as hemothorax and accumulation of lymphatic fluid in the pleural cavity is known as chylothorax this is an x-ray of an chylothorax here you can see the case of acute respiratory distress syndrome this type of case is seen in covid-19 infection which is uh, currently running all over the world in this type of infection you can see the multiple consolidation in the pulmonary area and it gives a ground glass appearance of the lung and it also disrupt the lung architecture which affects the spo2 level of the lung so this was all about the chest x ray concluding in chest x ray you should look for a b c d e a for airway b for breathing c for circulatory status of and d for any deformity of body or other structure and every other possibility or pathology thank you